Hey there, I'm Lisa Niven Kelly for Beeducation.com. And I'm Mel McKay with Beeducation.com. We just shot this great class over on Facebook Live, our Beeducation Live show, but we've edited it and archived it here for you to watch. If you hear us answering customer questions or talking to, quest talking to customers, you can just ignore that. That was just stuff that was in the moment when we shot the class, but there's still so much great content here. Yeah, but if you have questions while you're watching this archive, go ahead and leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching through our site, just toss us an email at classes at beachcation.com. And we'll get back to you with an answer. Yeah, let's get into the video. So here's what we're looking at here, people. We've got some hole punch pliers. We have got the fan favorite power punch which looks intimidating, but it's not. Um, we've got a couple of screw down hole punch options and then just some drill bits, which we don't sell. We might start selling again, I'm not sure, but you can get those at any hardware store, uh, either in just like the drill department or if they sell Dremels, um, they'll have a lot of really good drill options there, drill bit options that maybe are smaller than the big chunky drill department. So let's start with, these guys. So the hole punch plier and the screw down hole punch is what I used for years. I um, didn't drill. I didn't have the big power punch, but it's mainly because I was traveling and teaching. So these are awesome for that because you can just throw it in your bag. I'm going to try to zoom in close so you guys can see the heads here. There you go. So these are great, like I said, for traveling, and these come in three different sizes. This one is super old, as you can see, we have it labeled. This is from the old days of the demo mm -hmm. booth. I think this is a 1.25, 1.5, these are all millimeters, and 1.8. And which one is your favorite, or which one do you find most universal? The 1.5, Me too. yeah, because a 16 gauge, 18 gauge fits really, really well in there mm -hmm. and still leaves you wiggle room. So if you're hanging something like a pendant with a jump ring, you don't want the jump ring to fit the hole perfectly because you won't have movement between it and the pendant. Mm -hmm. So let me show you how these, how these work. I will use the 1.5 or maybe I'll use this guy. Okay. So you notice that on some of these, I've got a little piece of paper here. Let me try to get even closer for you. Yeah, what's that paper about, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Mel. Um, so sometimes with these, when you're squeezing, and obviously you have to squeeze really hard to get it to punch through, um, sometimes it leaves like a little mar around the hole, and that's from the little punch here that the stem comes out of, and you're squeezing super hard, so it kind of makes sense. I will be honest, some of them do it and some of them don't, but there's a solution which is this little piece of paper. Actually, it might be a polish Pro pad. Polish, I don't know. Yeah. Anything works. And it's just acting as a little bit of a cushion. So actually, let me show you on. But it has, to be, it has to be about like cardstock, not yeah, like yeah. a regular piece of paper, right? Totally. Got to have a little thickness. So here's the 1.8 and it's, there's not one in there. So let's punch with this and see if it does it. So I'm just going to come in here on a blank, squeeze. And oftentimes you got to kind of rock it to get it off. Oh, got a little close to the edge there now, didn't I? It looks perfect though, I think. Yeah, it didn't really mar it. Let me try harder. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, Lynn says she's used a tiny piece of felt. I think that's perfect too. That, well, there's a little scuff there, but I think that was there before. So that one's doing pretty good. Sorry, it came yeah. off right in there. Um, but had it actually... I was testing one earlier that was doing it. Maybe it's this one. I don't know. But let's say it was a little bit scratchy. I just have this piece of like cardboard that I grabbed earlier and I just punch a hole in it and kind of squeeze and rip off a piece. It's really that easy. Just make sure it stays on it. Or you can put some tape on there and then that's really going to give you a nice cushion. Cool. Mm -hmm. This is 24 gauge I'm punching through, so I really didn't have to push very hard to get it through. But you'll notice too that the little bits are coming out, and that's pretty important. If for some reason this hole here is getting clogged up, that's when you're going to have a hard time with pressure pushing it through. I think I noticed on this one. No, 
Oh, yeah, sometimes the, it, on a certain one it will yeah. elect, right? See, this one's got it sitting in there. Yes. See that little? So I'm just going to like. It's a, ch a dangling try to chat. Get it out. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it won't get out until you punch something else. Yes. Mine's getting stuck in there, which would be interesting if we just kept punching all day. Oh, well, let's do it. I love live. Maybe it would pop through. There it goes. Maybe yeah, it, just oh, eventually. There it goes, yeah. Or just get a pin. That's a good idea. And pop it out there. But I don't actually don't usually have that happen. This dude, I know for a fact, is about 10 years old. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, on that note, if ever you find that your punches, this bit right here, are, you know, not sharp or something weird's happening, it comes with an extra one, I believe, and you mm -hmm. can buy replacements. So the other thing I want to point out is you'll notice that the way that this, um, let me see if I can get real close without getting blurry. The way that this punch works is you see that angle on the pin? Mm -hmm. So it touches there first and then bites through. So if you are, mm, oh, you grab a Sharpie. I forgot to get a Sharpie mm -hmm. out of that bin over there um, on the wall. Mm-hmm. Cool. So if you're trying to punch on a specific spot that maybe you've got a dot that you want to stick to. Oh, that's a little close. Let's go there. You got to make sure that the pin here, you don't put it right in the center of that dot mm -hmm. because then it's going to push it off to the side. So you got to keep that in mind, right? Like the cent the pin where it touches first is on the edge of the hole. It's not in the dead center of the hole. That makes sense. Does it? Yeah. Okay, good. I don't know if I make I mean, sense. I think that's in, it's especially important when your dot is at the very edge of the piece too. Totally, yeah. So I've got the pin, you can't tell, but on the edge of the dot. Mm -hmm. And then punch through and hopefully I got it ish. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard. I can't really see very well with this camera in my face. You know, Lori had a great idea. I love this idea where she uses the hole punched parts to add dimension to her soldered pieces. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have seen a lot of people. Like, use the little bits. Of yes, that. using cool. the little bits. I've seen a couple of designers do that with, like, rings and stuff, too. That's such a cool. smart idea. Yeah. Love it. Especially with the power punch, because you can get really big ones. I even like these, too, but absolutely, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, so hang on to them. Mm -hmm. Hang on to your little bits. If this loosens here... You just grab a couple of wrenches or pliers, not mm -hmm. your good pliers, hold this part and tighten that part. Mm -hmm. And if ever you wanted to move the pin, like sometimes I like to have the point at the top rather than at the bottom, you can loosen them, turn it around to that and then tighten them up. But sometimes, but then make sure it still closes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like exactly oriented to go this way. And when I shift it, sometimes it just kind of hits the side first just play with it but make sure you get it nice i kind of do like the tip there. to be at the uh, uh, the, mm -hmm. the part that's going to hit first to be at the tip because then it seems like you don't have to kind of watch what you're doing as much yeah i do that for one of my classes for the spiral class where we notch the washers and we put like a half hole at the edge we move the tip so we can see better mm -hmm. that makes sense all right moving on to the screw down hole punch so this is the classic screw down hole Oh wait, can I interrupt you for one minute? Yeah, yeah, do it. You guys, one thing I also have to say that I love, I don't know if anybody else does this, but with um, the one five, with any one of these, uh, these guys, I use it to do holes in my um, cards to hang my earrings on. Oh. It's a great hole size. Cause a lot of people- It's like a paper hole punch. Exactly, but it's tinier than Tiny. most paper hole punches. And it works great in cardstock paper. Especially like the 1.25. Yes. Good one, Mel. This one is super old, as you can tell. I have, I've stamped it with my name cause this is from when I used to travel and teach and they would disappear. I also on some of them, would put a crystal on it. It's kind of funny. If you've ever taken a class, you may recognize that. Um, so two different sizes here. I think it's a 2.3 and a 1.6. These um, come with replacements. If ever it breaks, like you were punching through something you shouldn't be, mm -hmm. or it's just, you know, lived its life, mm -hmm. which doesn't typically happen actually, then you can unscrew it and put a new one in. And the replacements are also on sale if you want to back up. One thing I want to say about this one is craft stores sell one that looks identical mm -hmm. and i cannot tell you how often it happens in our group our facebook group and come join it if you'd like there's a link in the comments there um where people are like oh i hate that it broke the minute i used it and i was like wait wait where'd you get it and it's always a craft store it's very different than the one that we sell very and this different. is not a sales pitch <laughs> please no, it's i not. think you guys trust me by now we're it's trying to save very, you the money yeah 
the one at the craft store may last a while, may last forever. I don't know, but a lot of people, it arrives broken, they tried to punch it and the pin popped off immediately. And I'm not saying a certain brand at a craft store, it's just been a general theme that I've seen. Mm -hmm. So the one at the craft store I think is like $12, this is like 30 something. And this dude lasts. It, it really does. super, super strong. I mean, look how old mine is. I'm positive this is from like when I used to teach stamping. It shows like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. I have to say the thing that I enjoy about the screw down hole punch is you can really see if you put your mm -hmm. disc in there, you can see exactly where the hole is going in. And you also don't have to worry about a tip or anything because you can put it right on the dot. Right or, on there, yeah. I don't yeah. even have to do a dot. I just I just put in my piece, especially if I'm working with earrings and it's really, really tiny area. Like I've hammered out a stick and it will definitely go in exactly where you're trying to have Perfect. it go in. Yeah, that's a really good point. So what I do is I put it where... I think I want it. Mm -hmm. And then like Mel said, you can look at all the different angles. I do love that. And then punch through. So when you punch through, hold on to your piece. Otherwise it sometimes will just move back and forth, but mm -hmm. hang on to it. See, there it goes. Mm -hmm. And then stop when you feel it punch through. Mm -hmm. Another mistake people make is they go all the way, tighten it really tight, come back out, and then they mar their piece. Yes, you'll have a huge scar, it's awful. Yeah, and especially here when you pull it out. So I've undone it, it's pulled it to the top of the tool, and I'm gonna just unscrew it out. I think mm -hmm. that's the hole I just made. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's pretty straightforward. This other one, same thing. If you are finding that it's marring, then some people put a little tape on their metal and then punch through. But I just felt it punch through, so I'm going to come back out. And Nancy was wondering what gauge that goes through. I mean, like, what, what's the thickest gauge? I'm having a hard time remembering. I, I, I want to say 20 gauge. It's it's metal dependent. Yeah. No longer since we're using so many different metals, can we just say mm -hmm. a certain gauge? Because I wouldn't mess with these on stainless. Oh, gosh, but no. sterling, you know, I've gone through, I don't know, like 18 gauge. And you'll know. You won't be able to screw it through. Yeah, you will feel it. It'll feel tougher. But yeah. You, I, I feel like I use it on my 20. Like, I mean, 20, sure. 20, 20, yeah. 20, it's, it's really great. It goes through like butter. It's not hard on your hand to do. Yeah, it, and you can, because of the way it's built, you can get really good leverage. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, just like with the pliers, make sure, like you can see the little copper in there. Make sure you clean out the holes, mm -hmm. the plumbing. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Now it's gone before you go and use it again. Okay, now this guy is very similar. This is the Easy Rivet System from Bean Smith. And what we love about this one is that you can reach in further. So look at the difference here, especially on this smaller one. I can only go this far in, but what right. if I wanted to punch a hole way back here and I didn't have hole punch plier or something? Even the hole punch pliers are limited, but this has like a really deep neck or throat. You can go you know, way far in. Yeah, if you're wanting to punch a hole in the middle of something, or you're working on a larger piece, or you're doing a folded flower, I, I remember just going, how do I get to the middle? Mm -hmm. And that easy rivet is awesome to be able to not be limited to where the hole is going to go. And it also is, it's made for riveting. So what it does is it punches a hole on one side, then the other side you use a um, kind of like a half eyelet rivet and it flares it out and sets it. Mm -hmm. So it has another use. With these I haven't found that if I'm punching through something that's too hard that it's going to break mm -hmm. because I can tell right away if I can't get it, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to push it. Mm -hmm. That's when you ruin your tool. Like just count on the tool. The tool will talk to you. We had a question earlier too where someone had asked what's the size for the rivet, which is 1.5, correct? Like if they, when you're, when you're trying, when you're buying them for the rivets, like the typical rivet width. Um, it depends on the rivet. Okay. So when riveting, and we have a whole class on this on our site, I'll put a link after the show. Um, you have to either know what size your rivet is or what size your hole is. If you're working with a certain size hole, you have to have a rivet or wire that fits it perfect. If you're working with a certain size rivet, you have to be able to punch a hole that fits it perfect. So yes, 1.5 is very popular in our nail head rivets that we sell in copper and sterling are 1.5. So they work great. So if you were going to get, I mean, the easy rivet's great, but if you were going to get one of the handheld punches, mm -hmm. the 1.5 would probably fit most of the ones that we have on the site. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if not, you can't shrink a hole, but you can ream it out. So you could punch a hole and then get a round um, file and file it out to make it bigger. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, but not too in-depth because um, I want to get to the power punch, is drilling. Mm. So it's pretty obvious. Drilling is probably the easiest, fastest way to do a hole. Um, I have this Dremel. Don't be like, I gotta have that Dremel. I have a bunch of Dremels. This is just one I bought at some point that's powerful and spins. <laughs> that's what you need. <laughs> you need power and rotation. You can use a big old drill that you use for screws. Um, if you're a proper jeweler, you probably have a Fordham and that comes with a bunch of different bits as well. So um, that's a flex shaft and really strong and great for jewelry. You can use it for polishing, all kinds of stuff. But same with this one. I use this one for my radials when I polish. This is just my guy. And it just, it works by shifting it here. Um, I have another one that's like more of a trigger one. It works great too. So for drilling, I like to first use the center punch and give it like a little dot exactly and you can do this with um the hole punch pliers as well exactly where i want my hole to be so let's say i want my hole right here i'm going to just tap just like stamping so i've got this tiny little divot that's almost like a um pilot hole mm -hmm. if you know what that is it's not a hole though but it will give a place for the tip of the drill bit to sit mm -hmm. so it doesn't wander. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So I've just got a drill bit in my hand, but it'll sit right there and it's yeah, like in there, sense. right? Sometimes when you start drilling, you're like, Arr! and you right, just scratch right. it. Yeah. So I then, of course, get that out of there and drill into wood. Some people drill into rubber. So you can hold it as you drill, but that's not particularly safe. Mm -hmm. And first things first, these are my sexy safety glasses. And I really am putting them on. You can hold it if you want. It's not the safest thing. I don't really recommend it. And the metal gets hot. So you can hold it with pliers, nylon jaw pliers, or I like to hold it within my ring clamp. Let me come out a little bit so I can show you this tool. This is used for holding rings when you polish. Like let's say I wanted to really work on this ring. But I like to hold my metal with this so I have a good grasp on it, mm -hmm. lay it right there, and drill through. I would also put a little cut lube on this. I didn't bring that with me, but I would just dip it right into the cut lube. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's just as easy. Let me zoom in for you. I'm going to get that right in that spot. <laughs> Oh, wow, that really was easy. Mm -hmm. So the metal's not really hot because it wasn't much of a hole. But the mistake I see people make is it goes through and they turn it off. But it has to be still rotating to pull it out. You know, like mm -hmm. they punch through and it's in the, in the wood and they're like, okay, I'm done. But then they're kind of stuck in there. So make sure you're still rotating as you bring it out. Oh, that makes sense. So this is... I mean, you saw how quick, if you're doing production work or whatever, I definitely prefer this. But again, those other tools for traveling are great. And it's really smooth. If it leaves a little bit of a burr, grab some paper, sandpaper or a file and just... Okay, one other tool. So this was the center punch that I did that little dot with. And it it's awesome for stamping. It does like the perfect little dot. I mean, it's mm -hmm. great you know, for just a little pattern or whatever. Or if you wanted to do like a constellation. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we also have the um, auto center punch, I believe it's called. And I'm going to push this down and it kind of clicks. So it makes it a little easier. You don't oh, need Oh, that's a, cool. Yeah. It's kind of like a pen. Yeah. It's cool. It's a little bit bigger, but also super cute. Mm hmm. Yeah. Do you have to apply pretty hard pressure to do that? Um, yeah, I'm mean, pushing down. I'm mm -hmm. wiggling because it's just going back and forth. Yeah. But you need to do it on a bench block, not on wood. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, let's just do it. It will kind of poke, poke through on the back. See how it like sunk oh, in? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. See how it dimples? Yes. Can you see that on camera okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's why you do stamping and everything on a bench block. The power punch is pretty straightforward in that... You know, you're going to get your metal in there and squeeze it. But what often happens, as many people will tell you, is your hands smash together. Mm -hmm. So I use it in a clamp. And what I have here is just a table vise. We sell this table vise. It's nice and compact. But anything 
will hold it. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen holders that you screw into your table that holds it, but it's kind of, I think this is faster to get in and out. Mm -hmm. So what I do is just put this guy here and you need to have a nice tight grasp on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to hold it well enough that you can just do this because you're going to oh, okay. move it back and forth. But that's why I take a piece of wood that's about this height. This isn't anything fancy. I should think it's this end. There we go. And I let the handle rest on it mm -hmm. so that now I can push really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And I think I have it in a little far back. And I want to move it forward. There we go. So I'm just loosening the jaws here, putting it in there. I've got the plastic on because it gives it a little bit more of a grip or mm -hmm. rubber. And then it's backing up against there. So see, I can push really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And now I'm free to just, I always come down low, if you can see me. Hello. Um, <laughs> and see exactly where I want it to go. Look at it from all sides. I'm looking at it from here, from there. I can't totally move the camera, but we do have a product video on this that you can go to the product and it will walk you through and close up. And then I can just push here. And you see, I didn't have to go all the way down and I knew that. I knew it would just go through like mm -hmm. that and bam, there's my hole. Nice clean hole on the front and the back. Now, is it difficult to change out? Do you think the size is? No, it's not. And again, I'll do it really quick here, mm -hmm. but um, we show that on our video mm -hmm. as well. So all you do for the sizes is this little screw here comes undone. And then it will loosen here. I like to take this part out first because if you take the bottom out first, then this just falls to the ground. So I took this part out. Mm -hmm. It just sort of comes out of there. You just hold it and get it out of the way. And then unscrew this guy, mm -hmm. get the matching bits put them in. I'm just going to put this guy back in. And then here you're going to put that back in the hole and get it right over there and then put your screw back in. So pretty quick, mm -hmm. really easy. Um, oh, one thing that I want to point out is oftentimes, I don't know if you guys can see here. Let's see if I can zoom in. What I wanted to point out is that this needs to be a little bit higher then flush with the tool. Otherwise the pin doesn't go through. So what I mean is like not this high, mm -hmm. but you know, sticking up a little bit mm -hmm. to get it through, especially depending on the thickness of your metal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can do it without. Yeah, it would be interesting to see it even just without, just so folks can see. So again, just like the screw down hole punch, you can look at it mm -hmm. from all angles. Here, I'll zoom out so you can see my hands. Okay. You can either brace it on the table like that I like to do, or since this is thin, I know it's going to go through pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just softly going like that. Yeah, and it but is really you easy. you might want to go like that because sometimes people get their knuckles. Sure, that makes sense. I feel like the table vice, if you're going to do production work, that's good. But if you know you're just punching yeah. a hole or a couple, like that totally works. You know what? Yeah, definitely. I leave it in the table vice. I don't punch a ton of holes with this. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I do. Um, but it's just always there. I like it because it's so clean. It's so clean mm -hmm. on the front and the back. And yeah. I think it's so neat also to use one of the much larger holes. And I see so many people doing like totally. necklaces with a really large hole and you can put like a few chains through there. It's just kind of a cool look or a really large jump ring. And I think that's a wrap for us. That's it. Keep the questions coming if you're watching the replay and we will check in in with about a month or a week or so we check back. But after that, email us if you have a specific question. And thanks for joining yeah. us. Thanks so much, everybody. We're going to do our cute little song here. Mm -hmm.